Welcome to TFR Let's Talk. I'm your host, Sopin Bhartia, and my next guest is Dr. Shujiao Gao, Client Lead and Cloud Engineer at Stark & Vane. Dr. Gao, welcome to the show. Thank you. As a lead of Client Lead and Cloud Engineer at Stark & Vane, what exactly do you do? Um, yeah, uh, as a client lead, uh, actually, I, I do multiple things. Uh, the first is, uh, on the high level, make sure things are delivered as client need. So build a relationship, make sure the trust is there. Um, sometimes I have a bigger team, make sure we as a team can deliver on time and make sure we are aligned with customer goals all the time. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I also do some engineering work. Since you said, you know, you also work on some projects, so I would be curious to know what are the, some of the interesting uh, cloud foundry related projects that you are working on or you worked on recently? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this year, uh, recently, actually, uh, two, mainly two, two types of projects I, I was, uh, I have been involved with. One type is migration. Uh, basically, people, uh, companies migrate from PCF to open source CF. And the other is after migration, we help them maintain and upgrade their platform. So those are the two types of projects I have been working on. So uh, migration is something that you recently worked on. First of all, can you give some examples of uh, migrations that you work on? And also, uh, what are the typical challenges that you see companies face when they were migrating uh, to from PCF to open source CF? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so... Uh, when they migrate from PCF to OCF, uh, so we, we have two ways of doing that uh, based on the company requirement. One is uh, we call it a new city. Basically, we spin up the new CF and then we let developers re-push their apps to this new foundation. Uh, this require less work on the operators. It's easier, but it will require developer team to, to do more work. Uh, the other is we call it lift over. Basically, we'll do a snapshot and then recover everything. The developer will not need to take any action and they will feel it's seamless. Um, the challenge, the challenge is um, get clear what the client's company's requirement when they do this. Some company requires, uh, let's say, less downtime, uh, don't want the developer to have to re-push the code, but some companies are okay with that. So basically, based on each company's requirement, then we will adopt a different uh, strategy. I think uh, one of the challenges is that uh, most of the clients will want a feature, uh, like an equivalent feature. So you have to try to make sure the new environment provide a equivalent feature or more or better features. Uh, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, Another challenge is, uh, believe it or not, it's come down to non-technical. It's more like a communication with the team, make sure all the team we involved are on the same page, because this is not something can done just with one team. You have to communicate with your network team, or your infrastructure, your developer team, and then make sure everyone is on the same page. Um, every party involved uh, be prepared for, for that. Also, when you look at PCF, you know, versus when you move to open source, uh, do they have to do a lot of things on their own now because they're using the open source Cloud Foundry? Uh, uh, because uh, what happens is that, you know, moving from one piece of software to other piece is easy. The challenge is to, you know, updates are there, upgrades are there, security is there, other things are there. So uh, how do you help them with that so that their environments are still safe, secure, updated? Oh, yeah. Um, so actually, diff different companies, we help them differently. Like one example is we keep on track on what's the latest thing come out, include the foundation itself, and then we will have a new version and also stem cell all that. Um, or even a certain release, let's say have a new version, solve the very uh, important CVE or what, we will let our client know, hey, uh, you, you should upgrade to this. Um, 
And so uh, that way client has an option to always stay up to date. Uh, some company actually prefer be safer, like they don't want to be the latest, they want to be like a minus one or what. Uh, in that case, we, we also notice some um, when the NS1 is ready to, to go. What patterns have you seen of how companies kind of operate and maintain Cloud Foundry? Oh, yeah. Um, very, a very common pattern, I think this probably is well known. Uh, they all have a test environment. Some people call it sandbox. Some people may call it uh, like a numpad or what, whatever they call it. They will have they will have this uh, environment they can touch since before going to prod. So they will try to set it up as similar as much as possible uh, to the product, product environment so they can do a more thorough test. And then another common pattern is people use automation like CICD. Uh, for the companies I have been helping with, they, they all use concourse, so basically and when the change is ready, they will test in Namprod, Sandbox, or whatever. And then when it passes the test, they will kick off the pipeline automatically, uh, up, upgrade the same thing in the, in the prod. Um, and then another common thing is certainly they all require change window when you change product and environment. Uh, the difference maybe is uh, some allow downtime, some doesn't. Uh, for certain business, they just don't allow downtime. They, they have to zero downtime upgrade. Uh, for certain business, they actually want to exercise their, their developer or what. You, you have to be able to work when there is downtime. So they will unpurposely say, hey, this site is done for maintenance for 24 hours. And you have to make sure everything still works, no impact on the business side. Yeah, I think that's the high level on um, how companies operate and maintain CF. And detail-wise, probably each company will be different. Uh, you were talking about the environments. Uh, is it also cases that, you know, uh, that companies end up having multiple environments? And if they do, how do you help them maintain those multiple environments? Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, most of the companies, they have lots of environment. Some of the companies I have helped with, like have 20 or 30 environments. Um, I mean, if you only have one, it's relatively easy to, to uh, build it or maintain it. Uh, but once you scale to a, like 20 or 30, uh, you want to make it easier, like less work. So what, what um, so the, the clients we have been helped, they all use the, this thing called the Genesis. Uh, that's an open source project to start winning created. So basically that will help them to uh, manage, maintain multiple environment more easily. Uh, the idea behind that is uh, share the most, manage the least. Uh, what I mean by that is even your ma no matter how many environment you manage, there is a common setting. So you try to put that in one place, then you only manage the difference from each environment. Uh, so now you minimize uh, the the files or the thing you have to uh, monitor or modify, um, so that make it easier. Uh, on top of that, we also build in uh, several tools uh, inside of this Genesis Kit, make make it easier. Let's for example, one of the challenges in is credential management. So we also build that in, uh, make the credential management renew. Um, monitoring easier uh, and then the like uh, many companies use CICD the Genesis tool set also make you set up a conquer CICD easily so basically is all the things you need to try to um, put it into this one tool system and make it easier and uh, they uh, even like a company manage 20 or 30 environments uh, the stuff they need to to maintain to operate the environment are actually not that many, like two, some are two, some are three. Uh, they, yeah, so it's very efficient. 
Dr. Gao, thank you so much for taking time out today and uh, uh, not only shared your own experience that you face with the customers as you help them migrate from PCF to Open Source Cloud Foundry, but also some of the, the challenges that they face and how they tackle them and how you help them uh, overcome that. Thank you for sharing those insights and I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. That's very nice.